to our decimal unit and we're gonna take what we used last lesson the estimating and we're gonna apply it to multiplying today uh, to find some actual answers so just to start us off I got a table here it's showing us some of the world's top roller coasters now I looked this up there's many different categories but I just took a few from each category and uh, I'd like you to choose three roller coasters that you think you'd like to ride. Maybe it's based on the name or the country. And suppose you rode each of them eight times total. I'd like you to estimate how far you would travel on each roller coaster. So give us an estimate first. And that's what we used last lesson. Then I want you to try and figure out the actual distance. How far have you gone uh, in those eight times? How many kilometers have you traveled in eight um, rides on the same roller coaster? Okay, so let's talk about a particular roller coaster, and it's called the Ultimate. It's the world's second fastest steel roller coaster, and it's 2.268 kilometers long. Now, Jordan and Amy rode this roller coaster three times. Well, how far did Jordan and Amy travel on the Ultimate? So we need to multiply 2 and 268 thousandths times 3. And we'll be looking at three different strategies to calculate the answer here. The first method we're going to try is using base 10 blocks, and I don't recommend this method necessarily. It's it's more for visually knowing what's happening, but um, if you have lots of base 10 blocks kicking around, or if you want to draw lots of pictures, it, it could work for you. And so I kind of have three rows here for 2 and 2.68, so you can see in the ones column I have two, like, really thousand cubes. And why do I have that for it represent a 1? Well, we're going to work to thousandths, and one thousand thousandths equals one. So we're going to have to shift our thinking if you're used to having that being a thousand. It's now representing one. And you can see that there's two tenths or 200 blocks in each uh, row there, and I have six hundredths, and I have eight thousandths. And I have three of them because that is um, how much is all together. Now, we got to make this into something that we can work with. So... Let's just try this. I have, um, you know, ten thousandths equals a hundredth. So if I have eight here, if I add maybe these two, that would bring us another hundredth. And then if I do the same here, maybe I'll have these guys that also get us another hundredth. Okay, and that leaves these four left over as our thousandth. So maybe I'll put a four here. And uh, I'll just move two of these guys up because that's I don't know what's going on here because that's going to add up. Now let's add up these guys. I need ten to make a tenth. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these guys will make one of these. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that's exactly right here. So. We're going to stick these here, okay? So I guess that means we have a zero here. So let's move two of these guys over. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I don't have to do any regrouping there, okay? And I'll have a decimal here. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think my answer is six and eight hundred four thousandths and we'll find out if that's accurate or not all right here's another method we're going to estimate the product now we we did this before that's why we focused on the last lesson we're going to use it to figure it out this time we're going to figure out we're going to multiply the decimal as if it was a whole number and we're going to estimate the decimal point so let's estimate first i have two and two hundred sixty eight thousandths i'm going to multiply that by three well, we can either change that to a 2 using front end rounding or decimal benchmarks, okay? It's close to the number 2. And so 2 times 3 is 6, so our answer has got to be around 6 kilometers long, okay? Now, let's actually do this. So I said, let's make this into a whole number. As if we just get rid of the decimal for now, and we're going to multiply this by 3. 
Okay, well, I'm going to show a different method. Maybe you're not used to this multiplication method, but 8 times 3 is 24. Now, this 6 here represents 60, so 60 times 3 is 180. And this 2 represents 200, so 200 times 3 is 600. And this represents uh, 2,000, so 2,000 times 3 is 6,000. If I add all these up, I'm running out of room here, but I have 4... I have a zero, regroup, that's an eight, and a six. So I'll rewrite that over here, six, eight, zero, four. Now remember, we had an estimate, and we said our estimate would be around six. Now we have this answer in the thousands. Well, we gotta place our decimal point. Well, it makes the most sense to place it here. That's about six, 6.804, six and 804 thousands. Hey, that's the same answer we had in the last one. All right, strategy number three, we count decimal places. And in this strategy, very, very similar to the previous one, but we are gonna count decimal places. We don't need to estimate in this one. So if you were to ask me, I'd recommend strategy number two or strategy number three. So we just did this, um, but let's, for good practice, let's do it again. Maybe I'll do the old fashioned way. Eight times three is 24. 6 times 3 is 18, plus 2 is 20, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8, and 6 times 3, there is our answer again. Now I asked us to count the number of decimal places. I have 1, 2, 3. Well, because I have 3 decimal places, I will in my answer I will definitely have 3 decimal places and that's where we're gonna put our decimal. If I only had two decimal places, we'd have only two decimal places in our answer. If I had 15 decimal places, our answer guess will have 15 decimal places. So, very st similar strategy to the previous one. Now let's try, you try it. So Sal's flour mill puts 3.265, or three and 265 thousandths of a kilogram of flour in a bag. And each box holds six bags of flour. What is the mass of each box? So using one of the strategies, and I don't recommend the base 10 blocks, but if you want to do it, do it. Um, can you find the answer? How, what is the mass of each box? I'll give you, well, take whatever time you need to figure out this answer. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it a couple ways here. So estimate, if we're going to estimate, well, this is about 3. So our 3 times 6 is about 18 kilograms will be about our answer um, but you might notice we have three decimal places here so our answer will definitely have three decimal places okay so I have three two six five write it as if it was a whole number and I'm multiplying it by six six times five is thirty that represents a sixty sixty times six is three hundred sixty this represents a two hundred two hundred times six is twelve hundred and this represents 3,000, 3,000 times 6 is 18,000. Let's add these up. This is all 0. This is a 9. This is a 5. That's a 9. So my answer is 19,590, right? No. So remember, our estimate was around 18, and I do know it's three decimal places. Well, if it's around 18, that's got to be 19, and there's my three decimal places. So. The answer and all word problems in a sentence, but if you were to write it out, um, there was 19.590 kilograms in a box. Let's try one more. Jamie earns $12.78 per hour at his job. How much does he make if he works eight hours in a day? I'm gonna go a little bit further. How much does he make per month? Okay, now this is a real life problem because all of you will go work, and all of you will make money per hour to start off for sure. And you typically work eight hours a day. So you might want to figure out before taxes how much you're going to be making. So take a couple minutes because you're going to want to do this in real life. So uh, come back when you're, when you're ready to move on. Okay, so I'm going to have to think 12 times 8 here to estimate, right? Uh, I only have two decimal places, and that's normal because in money we only go to two decimal places. So there'll be definitely two decimal places uh, in our answer. Well, 12 times 8. Now, if you're not good at your 12 times tables, well, I know 12 times 5 is 60. And if I add 3 times 12, 
to it, which is to get my um, 8, that's uh, another 36, that equals 96. So he's going to make around $96, okay? Well, remember we write it as whole number, we're multiplying it by 8. 8 times 8 is 64, 70 times 8 is 560, 200 times 8 is 1600, 1000 times 8 is 8000. Okay, 4, that's a 2, carry that, that's another 2, carry that. So 10,224, I wish he made that much money, but remember it was around $96, and we know that there will be two decimal places, so there it is. He's going to make $102.24 in that 8 hours. Now I asked, what if he makes, how much is he making in 30 days? Well, we'd have to multiply this by 30, and that's going to be a little bit more extreme, but if you are looking for an extension, let's try that. So we have 100, let's say 100 as our estimate, times 30, 100 times 30, well, 1 times 3 is 3, add all those zeros, which is about $3,000 he's going to make, and I'm multiplying it by 30. Well, what we could do here is I could do this times 3 and then add that 0 later. We could try that. So we have a 12. 20 times 3, because that represents 20, is 60. That represents 200, 600. Nothing there. And then 10,000 times 3, oops, 30,000. Add all that. 2, 7, 6, and a 30. And we said it'd be around 3,000. So uh, remember, we have to add that zero back because we took it off. So it looks like if it's around 3,000 and we have two decimal places, that's where our decimal place is going to go. So $3,067.20. All right, guys. Well, you can see here that multiplying decimals does happen in real life. So you gotta get got to get used to it. And just remember that. So in life, math happens. Take care.